now let's watch a video to find out more about the project between mind and matter. As the physical world and the virtual world are coming closer together, we really have to be aware of our perception of space and how that can be digitally altered. As a co-founder of 40 Sound, I've been researching sound in space for a very long time. In the beginning, when I started collaborating with Nick, he was really coming from a visual standpoint. And I was really coming from a sound standpoint, but where we really found each other was actually in space itself. Between Mind and Matter is an audiovisual instrument. We really tried to make it an instrument that we could play ourselves and to compose in. Its foundation is built on 4D sound, spatial sound software, and we combine that with a physical model of a string. We collaborated with Marcel Smith, who is also part of the 4D sound team, to create this model. You see this string, but actually around it you hear the sounds moving through the space and they all have a different way of modulating the string. One object can have a certain physical uh, size and can pull it towards it. Other ones can have a distorting effect on the line. So the combination of all these objects really translate into a dance in the space. it really started as trying to make the instrument and then while we were going we slowly started to get ideas on how to create a composition that really told the story of the physicality both in sound and uh, visual. first part again, it was really a strong metal sounding object. It's laser sharp, super controlled, whereas in the ending it's really smooth as silk and really goes through the space as one fluent movement. And that's the kind of contrast that we were looking for in order to create the whole piece. It seems that, that it sort of has a soul and has its own entity, you know? so that it has its own sort of motion and rules and that we found a flow together to make that work. This is the thing with interaction that sometimes you don't say too much and people put their own meaning on it. Yeah. And I think that's the best artworks in general do this. Also a painting, like if you literally explain all the bits, it doesn't really, it's not super interesting, but if you can project your feelings and the, the stuff you're dealing with on it, like then it becomes more, it, it becomes finished actually. So we need the audience also to finish it. And in, in this case, well, it was the same, um, uh, the same um, choice basically, are we going to put sensors or not? But we chose in the end to uh, just have the sound and the light work together in, in the space and then the interactivity is where are you in the space and how do you move through the light and through the sound and this is already super interactive. But I think, uh, I think uh, Between Mind and Matter really started with the space. So that was the first ingredient. Uh, I, I went to, uh, uh, to uh, this fantastic building that they, uh, wh where they uh, gave the festival. And it was like an, a beautiful hall with very industrial, but like it, it, just, it just triggered me immediately. So I was uh, thinking like, wow, we can really do something using this space or transforming this space with, with our work. And uh, it often happens that spaces kind of are the starting point for pieces. So we, it's really location based. And we, we sometimes repeat it, but we often also change the piece then if it's in a different space.
Yeah, that's what we did for Anima in Delft. It was in a church and normally we use 8.1 speaker system like a cube. But for that, Salvador made a new mix that works with the, the full length of the church, but in a very different setup. And that makes it so much better. So I never understand how artists just like place something in a space and just assume it will work because that's like, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big handicap you have at mm -hmm. that point. You, you're both very much aware of space and that's yeah. what you share yeah, also. Yeah, it's very important. Yeah. yeah, that's also the way, it's also because of 40 Sound, I think, where you've been working yeah. on for yeah. a long time. Yeah, I, I've been working uh, um, with 40 Sound. This is a spatial sound composition uh, tool and it's been uh, very influential for my thinking as well, uh, other than developing uh, the, the software. It's like the way you compose with space also becomes changes while you work with it or your thought process on it. And I think between mind and matter, uh, although it's uh, mostly like if you see it on a video, it's, it's a very visual installation, but actually sound is the driving force in that piece. It's, it's uh, there like the, the there's a enormous uh, speaker setup uh, surrounding the space and the sounds are actually triggering a physical uh, model of a string in the middle of the space. So actually the sounds are kind of triggering uh, this, the, this string in the middle in different ways and putting forces on that and that becomes a dance. And by that, the space get, gets transformed. Yeah. And I see that in your compositions because it's not the interactive part which people like or, or the, the, the perception. They are always super pretty. So I think you have the space really there because we can see that. And uh, uh, Rent, do you have any technical question? Uh, not particularly technical, but I have some more questions because about between my and matter. Is it also placed in different locations? Uh, we're working on one now in uh, Austria, Switzerland, uh, one of the two. <laughs> I don't know, in <laughs> Europe. <laughs> um, yeah, there, I mean, there's been requests for it. So, uh, but it, it's again, we have to tailor it to the site. So it depends. We got a request from like some old salt mine in Russia. I don't know if that's still happening. Whoa, that would be that's cool. beautiful. And they are yeah. so clean, the salt mines. You yeah. can go with sneakers and everything. Really? Yeah, yeah, they are the cleanest mines. Oh, wow, that's that's good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's, yeah, then we get this request and they want a piece, but we see the space and there is so much, like, there is so much opportunity. But the sound will be horrible, huh? The salt, the salt. But the, we'll we'll have to see, yeah. Yeah. like, what, what's horrible? If you can use it, yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe Make if I put my, the current composition in there, it sounds terrible, but if I, hear one element in my composition that sounds good there, I can use that and create something new. So we kind of, sometimes we do small adjustments to make it work. So maybe the, the shape of the, of, the, uh, of the room is different. So we only change the shape, but we keep the same composition. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we just, they request something, but we make something completely new. Or, yeah, or we suggest a different, to do something different. So they ask for a certain work and when we see and hear the space, we'll be like, oh, no, wait, it, we could, it's better to do like completely something else. Yeah. Yeah. And it's also more fun to make something new, of course, if yeah, yeah. you have the time or, and the budget. Or develop it further. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. And that's also more fun than to, to just play something. That's more like a rep repetition. And But we have so many ideas we want to do. It's like, maybe we can use this opportunity to do this thing now. That would be so nice. Yeah. I have one more question about the, about the sound, the music. It, uh, it's what I heard so far is purely electronic. But do you use organic sound sources to compose your music? Or did you ever think about using acoustic instruments or use their sounds they produce to sculpt into an electronic sculpture? Um, you, you mean uh, it, it, physical it, instruments yeah. or do you mean recordings of instruments? Record, whatever. You yeah, well, you actually, if, if, you, if, if, for example, Anima, it, sounds, it can sound at certain points very electronic, but uh, most of the sounds that are in there are actually recordings from different locations. So we went into the forest uh, and we recorded all kinds of wood and we went and we went into metal. I don't really s make a differentiation in my brain between an instrument and uh, wood or uh -huh. something. Yeah. I see no, no, it as, as right. an instrument. Yeah. 
uh, I definitely, for example, there is also uh, I have one part that sounds very is very influenced by uh, metal, and I used a lot of strings in there as well. So they are there, but I, I, I focus. I tend to focus more on the sound first, and then use it as an instrument. This is kind of my yeah. It's just like I I I, I think from so, as sounds as just as an as an but so the, you do use organic sources like strings or metal or wood to yeah. start with, yeah. Instead of just purely electronic generated sounds, it's also there probably. But uh, yeah, there's I, I I I tend to take both approaches. So I I go to very direct. So I go to hit some metal and then uh, uh, plug strings. Uh, just very direct physical. And then I also have some synthesis ideas that I try out that I know of. This gave me such a, I, if I put 16 different delays in different spots in the space and I all make them really short, really high feedback, and then have one algorithm that changes these delays, then I get a really metallic sound. And so then I use that as well. So it's, it's kind of, it's blurry. 